Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Rise Guru, and I'm very excited to be bringing you a low profile cooler shootout today. I have five of the very best low profile coolers arrayed in front of me here, and I'm going to be comparing them to the box stock coolers you get with AMD's latest Ryzen processors. One of those is the Wraith Spire cooler I have in my hand. The other one is the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is actually currently installed in my ITX test rig. And what's very important about this shootout is I'm, I don't just have these coolers being tested on an open bench. I'm actually going to take the time to install each one of these in this tiny SG13 case from Silverstone. The reason being that when you test a cooler like this on an open test bench, you really don't see how it operates within the confines of a tight case where it's meant to be used. More importantly, you may not know if it actually works on ITX motherboards. Of course, this being an ITX case, it requires a mini ITX motherboard. I have found and my viewers have found over the recent, actually recent years, is that a lot of these low profile coolers actually don't fit that well on ITX motherboards because of the way that motherboards are changing in their layouts. So I'm going to actually test each of these coolers on a real ITX motherboard. This is the B450. Uh, I ORS from Gigabyte that I have installed in here. I have a Ryzen 5 3600 processor that I'll be using for all my thermal testing. And like I said, I am going to compare these five coolers to the box stock AMD coolers. And one of the reasons I think uh, these comparisons are so relevant, particularly the comparison to the Wraith Spire here, is that these coolers are all essentially the same in the same size class. So I'm just going to go from actually uh, smallest to largest, introducing you to the five coolers that we'll be testing in this roundup. So the AMD Wraith Spire is 72 millimeters tall. Over here, I've got the NHL9X65 from Noctua. This is a 65 millimeter tall cooler. It's also the only cooler to fit within the standard footprint of a, an AMD or an Intel box stock cooler. Next up, I have the Big Shuriken 3 from Scythe. This is a follow-up to the immensely popular Big Shuriken and Big Shuriken 2 lines. The big difference here is actually Scythe has, I think, in response to market changes, it's actually increased the height of this to 69 millimeters. The older versions were 58 millimeters. And this is kind of a changing standard. It used to be that 58 millimeters was kind of the height of a lot of the small cases that were out there on the market. Well, Cases are being designed around slightly larger coolers, so Scythe is responding with a 69 millimeter tall cooler. Then we have the NHL12S. This is from Noctua. Um, this is a 70 millimeter tall cooler. Uh, unlike the other two coolers so far, it mounts its fan underneath the heatsink. So it's, it's actually designed for the air to blow up through the heatsink rather than down. Uh, a typical low profile low profile cooler is actually a downdraft cooler which means the air blows down through the heat sink and onto the motherboard. So Noctua came up with a different design here. We'll find out if that's better or worse. Um, in fact it's very similar in size to the Scythe cooler so we'll see how that works. Then we have the 73 millimeter tall Shadow Rock LP from Be Quiet. Uh, what's interesting about this particular cooler is it's the only one to use a standard thickness 120 millimeter fan. This is a 25 millimeter thick fan. So this is a standard case fan. Uh, so obviously what that means is maybe the heat sinks a little, bit, a little bit thinner or maybe a little bit lower. We'll see how that affects clearance with the motherboard components and in particular RAM. And then finally over here I have the 82 millimeter tall uh, NT06 Pro from Silverstone. This is actually the oldest cooler in the Roundup. This is the version 2, which simply adds an AM4 mount, which I, of course, will be using with my AM4 motherboard. Uh, now, that is the tallest of the coolers. It's 83 millimeters, and that happens to be the maximum height that you can use in a number of Silverstone cases, including the SG13 I have here when equipped with an SFX power supply. And this is a, this is a uh, layout that I highly recommend, although this case can fit larger, thicker ATX power supplies. I have an SFX power supply in here with an adapter to give me more space for taller coolers. It gives me 83 millimeters of space. So all these will just fit. Because I do have a little bit more clearance and because one of these coolers, the Scythe Big Shuriken 3, can actually be upgraded 
with a thicker fan, I'm actually going to be using a 25 millimeter thick version of the, the same fan that's included with the Scythe Big Shuriken 3. So this comes out standard at uh, 69 millimeters tall. When you add the thicker fan, it is 79 millimeters tall, which is still within my height limit for use in this case and still within the range of these coolers. So that's the only cooler I'm actually going to um, test in two different configurations. I will not do that with the Noctua, although I could, because if I did add a 25 millimeter tall cooler to the top, that would make this a 95 millimeter tall cooler, which really puts it into different price, uh, different size class. And frankly, it doesn't fit in my test bench. And I'm trying to make this as realistic and true to life as possible. And most ITX cases don't have 95 millimeters worth of clearance. Interestingly, the older version of this, the NHL 12, um, was about 95 millimeters tall and did use two fans, one on top, one on the bottom. Noctua responded to market conditions showing that 95 millimeters was really too tall for uh, a compact case. Um, and so that's why they came out with this different version. And so I'm not going to go uh, trying to change up reality here. 95 millimeters really is too tall for most compact cases. So we've got these five heat sinks. We've got one that we'll test in two different configurations. And of course, we've got the two AMD coolers, one that I have already installed in my chassis there. Uh, in all, you'll see eight different uh, heat sink setups then to, to cool the Ryzen 5 3600. The idea here is actually to pick a best because honestly, these are all in the same price range. Um, uh, just going from my left to right, uh, $50, $45, $50, $47, and $60. So they're all you know, within $15 uh, of each other. And, and frankly, that means, look, anyone who's shopping for a low profile cooler could probably afford any of these. So why not pick the one that's best? And keep in mind that the best doesn't mean necessarily the absolute lowest temperatures. It's also gonna be perhaps the easiest to install, the one with the best clearance for motherboard components and RAM, and potentially the best balance of noise and performance. So a couple of installation notes here. First, I went with Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM. It was quite a bit shorter than the Sniper X RAM from G-Skill that I typically use in my AMD Ryzen system. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, Sniper X was just too tall to use with all but one of the coolers I had on hand. So I did go with Vengeance LPX, and it's about as short as the PCB itself. You can see the PCB sticking out there. And the only other brand that's as short as this Vengeance LPX is the uh, Crucial Ballistics RAM. So you can go with the Sport LT model if you want something as short as Vengeance LPX. I also had issues fitting two of the coolers actually inside the case at all. With the uh, Shuriken 3 from Scythe, I actually had to bend the back of my case down a little bit, uh, the mounting plate. The Scythe actually was sticking out otherwise. So to uh, flip it 180 degrees, and fit it inside the case, I actually had to modify the case slightly. And then you can see that it actually does fit into place inside the case. Even worse was the Silverstone NT06 Pro, which you can see here actually protrudes entirely from the case. It's actually right up against the panel and that's with the fan clip off. You can see I'm, I'm touching it and that's where the panel would be sitting. Uh, the fan clip here on the side that would usually hold the fan on would actually protrude even further and not allow me to close the case, uh, which I didn't consider a valid configuration. So instead of having the fan clipped on, I just let the fan dangle like this. It's loosely connected on one side. Um, and so that might affect performance and noise, but that's all I could do in order to fit the NT06 Pro inside this case. Now here you can see all five coolers installed inside the case. Note that the Noctua is allowed several different orientations while the others only had one choice of orientation. Now let's get into the fun part, the benchmarks. I've got the idle benchmark here with temps, the sound levels, and also the RPMs of the fan. Now there's one standout winner in terms of noise and that's the Noctua NH-L12S which is spinning at 1048 RPM and hitting just 26 decibels. Yes, it is among the hottest of the coolers in this test, but at idle, that really isn't important. And I caution you not to worry about that when you see benchmarks at idle. There are a few coolers that are able to produce much lower temperatures, but take a look at the noise levels. On the left side, the AMD stock coolers 
are actually quite a bit cooler, but also much louder at 34 decibels. And then on the right side, we do see that a couple of the coolers like the Scythe Big Shuriken and Silverstone and TO6 Pro are a, a bit cooler, but they're also louder than the Noctua NH-L12S. Now let's take a look at a load benchmark. This is the CPU-Z built-in stress test. I ran this for five minutes and I view this as a very good approximation of a game. And that is because it loads the CPU to a high level, but not an extreme level. And what we see in the sustained benchmark is that there are a few winners in terms of temperature. Just scanning across the top, we see the AMD Wraith Spire is actually quite competitive at 76 degrees. It's tied with the Noctua NH-L12S. We also see on the right side the Silverstone NT06 Pro has the lowest temperature at 74 degrees, which you might view as a winner. But now let's combine that with sound levels. The Wraith Spire is at 44 decibels. The NT06 Pro is at a deafening 50 decibels. But what's the Noctua NH12S at? It's at only 36 decibels, which makes it just as quiet as the Wraith Stealth cooler, which is a lot hotter. The second best cooler in this test is actually the Be Quiet Shadowrock LP, which is one degree hotter than the Noctua, as well as one decibel louder. Still a pretty good result for Be Quiet in this test. Finally, we'll get into the Cinebench R15 benchmark. This is an extreme benchmark. It really tasks the CPU with an extreme load, 100% load, but it's very short duration, 30 seconds, so it's a different kind of test, and it, it shows different features and qualities of these coolers. So in this test, there's actually just one winner. It's the Noctua NHL-12S. It's able to respond extremely quickly to a ramp up in load without an extreme noise level. It's again the quietest at 36 decibels. That's an impressive result. The next runner up here is the Silverstone NT06 Pro at 75 degrees, but look at that noise level. At 50 decibels, it's just out of hand. Another thing I should mention was that I was very disappointed in the Scythe Big Shuriken 3 when equipped with a thicker fan. Take a look at the 120 by 25 millimeter fan benchmark. While it is quieter, it's because the RPM is so low. And frankly, this is the wrong fan for this cooler. It's actually running hotter than the slimmer fan. And this is what Scythe provided. Now, my opinion is that no cooler can really operate with a fan below 1500 RPM or so at maximum load. So this fan was just not the right fan. In this benchmark, I'd actually call the AMD Wraith Stealth a really good choice. It's actually quite quiet, and yes, it is one of the hottest, but it's also free. It comes with the CPU, and it's actually a decent heatsink. I also, again, like the Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP. It's quite quiet. It has decent temperatures. It's not as powerful as the Noctua, but it's nearly as quiet, and it's a good alternative if you can't get the Noctua at a fair price. Now, I've done a lot of cooler reviews over the years, and sometimes it's hard to draw conclusions because perhaps all the coolers perform similarly, or perhaps the most expensive cooler is the best, but you have to draw some line on, well, how much do you want to spend to get your CPU cooler? Well, in this case, one product was so dominant that it was easy to name a winner, and that is the Noctua NHL12S. This cooler comes in at $50, which is only a few dollars more than the cheapest coolers in this roundup, and yet offers both the lowest noise levels, and the highest performance overall in my test suite. Other thing it has going for it is that it's very easy to install. It's the only cooler that can be oriented in four different directions. That's thanks to Noctua, including two different sets of uh, brackets for AMD's AM4 platform. It's also true that on Intel's platform, you can uh, mount it in four different orientations. But in an AMD platform, that's actually a bonus that other manufacturers don't give you. Uh, you also have really great instructions and a lot of nice accessories like the, a great tube of NTH1 thermal paste. You have a low noise adapter and like I said, just a really good overall package. Now, does that mean it's for everybody? No, there are actually two caveats. And that is, first of all, of course, you need 70 millimeters of clearance in your case. And a lot of coolers are going to, uh, a lot of cases are going to be too small, too narrow, and not have enough headroom for a cooler this tall. So one of the older standards is 58 millimeters, and so you might need a much, much smaller cooler. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Intel standard, which is 47 millimeters. So if you have a very compact case, it was probably designed around 47 millimeter tall coolers, and that means you're just going to have a lower performance system. You're not going to have a powerful cooler or a powerful CPU in that system. But if you have 70 millimeters of clearance, you can fit this cooler. The other thing you're going to have to be worried about is your RAM. I went with Corsair's Vengeance LPX RAM. 
uh, that was because my G-Skill RAM was actually too high. You're going to need low profile RAM for this cooler and pretty much any low profile cooler you put in your system. Now, you might be saying, well, I've already got a good set of RAM. I don't want to replace my RAM when I replace my cooler. Well, there is an alternative, and that's why I'm naming as a runner-up the NHL9X65, also from Noctua. Now, this cooler does not perform nearly as well as its bigger brother, and that's despite costing exactly the same. These are both $50 coolers. So this couldn't possibly be the winner in this roundup, except for the fact that it does fit within the 95 millimeter layout of the Intel socket, which also means it will clear all RAM sticks, even on an AMD AM4 platform. So if you have RAM that you like that's high profile, you're not going to be able to use any of these other coolers, including the winner of this roundup. You're going to have to go with a cooler that is, doesn't overhang the RAM slots, and that's going to be this cooler right here. It still performs quite well. It's still quite quiet but it doesn't have nearly the performance of this cooler. So that is a bit of a catch-22. If you have a very high performance, hot running CPU, and you want very high performance, hot clock RAM that needs high, high heat sinks, well, maybe a low profile system isn't for you and, and you're gonna need a bigger desktop. So maybe these coolers won't work for you. But if you're willing to make some trade-offs, you can either get a very powerful CPU and low profile RAM and go with this cooler or you can get high profile RAM and go with perhaps a lower clocked or a lower, a lower core CPU and go with the smaller L9X65. Either way, Noctua has you covered. I didn't think that this was going to be, that this was going to come out this way. Um, I actually had really high hopes for some of the other coolers in this roundup. Um, in terms of style, the Scythe uh, Big Shuriken 3 would have won. I love the look of it. It did not have the performance to match. Um, I also thought the Be Quiet cooler had a good combination of a nice heat sink and a, and a thick 25 millimeter fan. It was in the middle of the pack. So, you know, it, it's a good compromise, but given it's only a couple dollars less, I, I couldn't name it even a runner up. And the Silverstone cooler, while it brings great performance, it's an outdated design. It's hard to mount and it's extraordinarily loud. Um, and really, I'm not sure anyone should be buying it at this point now that we have superior coolers. So overall, that's the roundup. I should mention one other thing. Of course, I did include benchmarks for AMD's stock coolers, and those are actually pretty decent coolers, particularly the uh, Wraith Stealth Cooler. I was very impressed with that cooler because it's only uh, 56 millimeters tall, which means it can fit. It's the only cooler, in fact, in this roundup that can fit in a lot of ultra slim cases. If you have 58 millimeters or 60 millimeters of clearance, that's the cooler you're probably gonna want. I was really impressed with its performance, and it's actually quite quiet. So from an OEM standpoint, I actually give AMD's Wraith Stealth Cooler uh, kind of a second place prize just because it's actually really effective and pretty quiet and it will work with most CPUs, including the CPU here. I have the Ryzen 5 3600 and it came with that cooler and it's, it's a decent cooler. It uh, doesn't have the, the same capacity as these other coolers, but it'll fit in cases that these other coolers won't fit in. So I hope you enjoyed this roundup. This was a lot of work, as you might imagine. If you did like this video and like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And I hope to bring you more content like this in the future. Until then, I'm Ari from the Tech Fires Guru, and I'll catch you soon.